Don't call them Legos. They are Lego bricks. Lego became a company in 1932, but Lego bricks weren't created until 1949, inspired by a creation from two years earlier. The basic Lego brick has remained the same since it was patented. I'm Lexi, and this is Delightfully Different. Now there are Lego theme parks, several Lego movies, a TV show, games, and tons of kits. My next guest proves that Lego isn't just for kids, it's for all ages. Hi, my name is Emily Dahl. I am a contestant on season four of Lego Masters. I feel like you're a Lego professional. I feel like that should be your title. <laughs> I would love to be considered a Lego professional. I guess once you've been paid for your work, maybe you could be considered that, which I have been paid one time, so maybe <laughs> I am a professional. Well, when did your love of Lego start? Was this something that you started with childhood or is this something you discovered as an adult? So as a little girl, I did get some Duplo, which are the bigger Lego blocks, but yeah. then we call them dark ages where you don't build for years and years and years. So I didn't get back into it until about 2021 when I bought my son his first set and yes, it just exploded into the amazingness. That it, yes, it was only a couple of years ago that I got into this hobby. Wow, that's kind of incredible. Um, and you didn't just get into this hobby. You're also a Lego inventor. You invented a Lego holder. Yeah, so I that was my big reason for getting into Lego is I created the thing called The Tray. I own a company called The Tray Company. It's T-R-A with the line above the A. Um, and we make wood Lego tray, well, wood trays compatible with Lego building. And then I just was like, okay, if I'm going to make this grow into something, I have to get into Lego to start promoting it. And then slowly I just started getting into Lego. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like, I love this. I love the community. I love the people. And then I just became ridiculous and couldn't stop myself. <laughs> you technically are a Lego professional if you invented the Lego holder. And if someone wants to purchase your Lego holder, what's the website they go to? So they would go to www.thetracompany.com. Okay. The tray company. And they're actually currently sold out. So you can't even get one right now. So oh, you know, damn, the holidays, huh? Yeah, they sell they sold out pretty quickly. Um, they are handmade right now. And so we only can make as many as our builders can make. Okay, so you're not making them in your house. You've got a team making them somewhere else. But I have a team. The first one, me and my brother-in-law made together. And then all my friends were like, I want one of those. And I was like, is this a company? Like, could I do this? I have owned other businesses in the past. I owned a photography business for a long time. I owned a hair salon for a long time. And so I was like, is this a company? Like, let's do it. And now we've just scaled to where we are today. And now it's like a real company. <laughs> That's incredible. How did it feel to have everything sell out? It was amazing. It's a great feeling. We've sold out every time we've put a launch out, which has been super awesome. So that's, that's incredible. Congratulations on that. Thank you. You also work at a Lego store. Yeah. So I run the Lego, uh, like we do classes for kids and adults and I run all their classes and their free events at Bricks and Minifigs here in Gilbert. They're actually in Utah, there are, I think, five bricks and minifigs. And nationwide, I think there are almost 80 now. Really? I didn't realize yeah. that this was a national store. And you're in Arizona, Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah, so I'm in the Gilbert store. And they are actually opening another one, my owners, in Red Mountain, which is on the other side of the valley. And they must have been stoked that you made it onto the TV show Lego Masters. Well, actually, I wasn't working there until after the show had finished filming. Oh, I just told my I just literally said to my husband, I need something to like have to shower and get out of my pajamas every day. And so I need to go to a, a job. But I knew I had my tray company stuff and then my own social media stuff that I spend most of my days doing. So I didn't want to have something that was too full time, but something I loved to do that just really got me out of the house while my kids were at school. And I, so I only go one day a week unless there's an event. I love it. That is so fun. Now, how many Legos do you own? I see behind you. Oh my the, gosh. Like how many rooms are filled with Legos or how many boxes? So I am going to teach you something. I'm going to teach all your listeners here too. Okay. So Lego is actually a plural word. So oh. there is no such thing as Legos. Okay. It is not a real word. <laughs> For some reason in America, we say Legos, but everywhere else in the country, like in the whole world, they would never say Legos. Um, it is Lego bricks or Lego sets or oh. the Lego group or like it's always okay. 
us Lego. It's so hard. When I first got into Lego, I always was like, yeah, my Legos. And then the group, the people in the community would be like, if you're going to immerse yourself in here, girl, you've <laughs> got to get the words right. Um, there's a lot of weird terminology behind Lego that you don't even realize are words. Um, a full is an adult fan of Lego. Oh, it's God, a legitimate okay. term. There's conventions that are called a full conventions for adult fans of Lego conventions where you go and you take your builds and you just hang out with other nerds for a week. And it's like a real convention you'd go for anything, but it's for Lego building. That's incredible. Now you are going to be uh, at a convention here coming up in the near future. Did I see that you're going to be at a convention soon? Yeah. So I go to conventions. Um, I will always be at the one brick slopes, which is in Utah at the mountain America expo center. It's in okay. August. Okay. I will always go to that one. My friends are the owners of that. I will support them hundred percent. I will be in brick world, Chicago, maybe one in Texas. So I will be traveling a lot this year, um, to Lego conventions <laughs> at this point now, are you like a Lego celebrity because, and then you get to go to the conventions cause you were on the TV show. So I went before I was on the show and I'll go after I will do meet and greets after, but like, I'm still going as Emily. I might have times where I'm Emily, a Lego master contestant, but for the most part, I'm still just Emily who likes to build Lego. <laughs> this is incredible. It's so much more fun than I realized. Now, what, yes. what, is, what does your family feel about the whole thing, starting with your husband? So my husband was super supportive. Um, I knew this was going to be a huge take on for him. Um, I mean, he, he works full time and he was going to yeah. have to be a dad and I luckily I had my sister-in-law who was able in between jobs and she was able to come stay with my kids on the days my husband worked, but like still he had to be full-time dad and mom and like all the things. Yeah. So he was so supportive and very sweet during my time there. How do you, how does he feel about that room full of Legos you got there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think for him it, at first it was a little bit like, let me just tell you, when we bought our first set, it was a hundred dollars. That's okay. it was one hundred dollars, and we were like back and forth. Like, should we get this? Should we not? It's a hundred dollars. This is crazy. Like, we're spending hundred dollars on a toy for mom. Like, the, now a hundred dollars is like a Wednesday for me. Yeah. <laughs> How much have you spent on the Legos so far? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I will definitively say probably in my room right now, there is, at l I would say probably at least $15,000 worth of Lego in here. Holy cow. Okay. And now you've got how many children? I have two kids. They are seven and five. What do they think about this? Cause they're at the prime age to be playing with Legos. I mean, they love it. They love Lego themselves. Um, my son that's seven, he has built a plethora of these sets on my wall. Um, the big Bowser set, he only likes the 18 plus sets. The little sets for him aren't challenging enough. Okay. And my daughter, we call her the wrecking ball because she breaks Lego. She is getting better, but she is, she's not allowed in my room without me. My son, he can come in here, but she has to have adult supervision. <laughs> and then what do like your parents and do you have any siblings? What did they think about this? Yeah, I have a lot of friend. siblings. Um, <laughs> My brother, so all my siblings are supportive, but my youngest brother, he was like a rock star during my time filming. Oh. He watched every single season. So we're now on season four. So season three, two, and one. Yeah. He watched every first episode of season one, every first episode of season two, every first episode of season three to try to tell me what I should prepare for. So he's like, episode one is like about you and Kelly. Like, what are you guys going to like? What's about you guys? Like, think about it. And then he would watch episode two when we would get through that to that episode. And so he was amazing. Very supportive. My parents love it. My dad, he watches it and it is so not up his alley. He's old school cowboy movies and he watches it every Thursday night. So it's oh, very, that's so my in-laws, AKA my bonus family, they are very supportive, sending me messages all the time. The oh. world, honestly, the world has been very sweet to me and I'm very grateful. That's awesome. Now do all your kids' friends know who you are? Are you the Lego lady to your kids' friends? Yes, I was already kind of the Lego lady before Lego Masters even happened. I would do things at their school. I would volunteer and do build events with them. Okay. And now I walk in and it's like, there's the Lego <laughs> Master, which technically is not correct. If you win the show, you are a Lego Master. Okay. If you were on the show, you are a Lego Master contestant. Gotcha. Okay. It's very specific. Very yeah. specific. Do your kids have their own Legos or do they play with yours? They have their own um, as well as their allowed. 
they're allowed to touch some of mine. Um, <laughs> the problem is mine is all perfectly organized by part and color. I and so it's that. super <laughs> frustrating when they come in because they just go crazy. My son stays a little more organized than my daughter, but they do have their own Lego in their room. And then we have a Mario City. Um, oh. Most adult fans of Lego, most AFOLs have city cities because they come up with these huge, beautiful modular buildings every year. We don't get that luxury because I'm still a mom. And so ours is a Mario city. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Who's better? You or your son? Uh, at, la at like building a mock or a set. I don't know either. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you what a, a mock is called a my own creation, which is what okay. we do on Lego Masters. Okay. Gotcha. All our, from our own mind. Um, and then a set is one that you would buy at the store, open it. It has the instructions it's ready gotcha. to go. Okay. So as mock building, yes, I am going to take the win on that set building. He is because I am all over the place. I'm like squirrel and I can't focus. <laughs> he is like focused. He will sit there and do a 2000 piece Lego build in a day or two. When did you realize that you had a talent for building with Legos like more than the average person? Oh man, I'm not. So when I started it, my first mock was atrocious. I'll send you a picture of it. Okay. And it was just like this little car that I thought was so impressive. I remember showing my husband, I'm like, look at what I did today to now what I build. I think I've just always been a creative brain. And so it just kind of flowed for me. And I practiced a lot. And the community that is out there for Lego people is unbelievable. It's the nerdiest, best community ever. <laughs> there is a huge community. I'm talking at one convention, they had 4,000 A-folds in Chicago last year. So can you just imagine 4,000 nerds just shoved into a convention hall? Like it, so the community is so helpful and I learned a lot from them. And my partner Kelly on the show, she's one of the best builders I know. And she was very helpful to me. I never thought I would be her partner because of how good she is at Lego. So did you know her before you guys went on the show together or did you end up getting teamed up together? So we had met through a, like a all women's Lego group. Um, I know it's like, wandered off into it's separate. So fun. Yes. So it was like, it's called the Lego, the ladies Lego lounge on Facebook, I believe. And it is like a group of women. There are thousands of us at this point, but we met through that. And then I just wrote her on Instagram, just telling her how inspiring I thought she was fast forward three years and we are, we go. got partnered together. together. Do you yeah. consider yourself and, and anybody who does Legos, do you guys consider yourselves artists? I think a hundred percent. There are a lot of artists in the Lego world. Um, I don't know if I would consider myself a Lego artist. Kelly, absolutely. She's a Lego artist. I build with Lego. I don't know if I'm an artist at that point yet, but there are some beautiful people that do beautiful art with Lego mosaics are like a flat Lego build. Um, so they're not three dimensional. Okay. They're done with like little one by one rounds that would look like this on a kind board. Of like pointillism and, if it was with paint. Yes. Yeah. Like exactly like dot art or whatever, but then they turn them into these amazing mosaic works. And those to me, that's really art. Awesome. Um, but art is subjective, right? So yeah. what, what I put out might not be an art to someone, but they, someone else might be like, you're a total artist. So. <laughs> I consider it art for sure. When, well, when you're done creating something, do you keep it or do you disassemble it? Or what do you do? What's the process? So when I create a mock, remember my own creation, okay. um, I usually build to take it to a convention or I enjoy it in my house. So, and then after a certain amount of time or a certain number of conventions, I throw it into a bin usually like on a reel or something crazy to be like, make it fun. And it just shatters everywhere. It's really fun. <laughs> and then I disassemble it and put it into their right spots that they go. So the disassembling is also a process. How does it feel when you're disassembling something that you put your heart and soul into? Um, It's hard, but also relieving. It's like, okay, I did this. This was great. People liked it. People enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now it's time to create something else that someone might enjoy even more or nice. so assembling sorting is my bane of my existence i <laughs> loathe it entirely but if you don't do it you can't build so it's just like one of those things you have to do gotta clean up afterwards yup yes um now when it comes to the to the television show uh, lego masters did you audition yep. for the show or did they did you find them or did they find you 
So they found me on social media and asked if it was something I would want to do. Okay. And I said, I don't like, I don't think I can do that. Like I am not, I am very new to Lego building. They're like, just try. And ultimately we tried and they liked us and we were scared because we're re both of us are good builders, but we're new to the building. So we were nervous, but we did. I mean, spoiler alert, we made it to uh, the semifinals. You so did a you really great job, right? And then what you was the audition after they contacted you initially and said, hey, would you be interested? I mean, that's got to be thrilling to begin with, to be even asked. How long was it and what sort of stuff happened before they en ended up putting you on the show? So you do a couple of like audition tapes, um, some Zoom calls with people, and then you wait, 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 wait. And then they say <laughs> you're a finalist and then you wait, wait, wait. And then they say you made it. So it's um, essentially just a process of basically how you would figure of any job interview that you would right. do. Similar to that, you put your best foot forward and you wait and wait and wait, best foot forward, wait and wait. And that's, so that's kind of what it was. And it was a, it was a stressful waiting, but I was like, right. come what may, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's okay too. It wasn't the time for me. I'm Lexi, and this is Delightfully Different. Today, I'm talking with Lego professional Emily, who was a contestant on Fox's Lego Masters. How long from the time you were done auditioning to the time they told you you were on was it? Um, was it months or? Oh, I can't remember how long that was, that process. I don't know. I would say maybe a month, give or take. Did they call so you my first... you, or how did they tell they you? Sent me a, they sent me a, a DM on Instagram. Oh, okay. but anyone can anyone can audition. So like you could you could audition. Anyone can put their audition tape forward and a casting agent will reach out to you. They right. they want people to audition. And what I would say is if you have any kind of Lego building experience, give it a try. Like yeah, right. no reason not to. How did you and your family react once you got chosen? I was crying, but like, that's not shocking because if anyone has watched the episode, I cry every single episode. I you think cried I cried all end. but one. I <laughs> cried at the end. I, I just have like a lot of big emotions, high and low. Like I can't hide how I'm feeling no matter how hard I try. So when they called, when uh, my casting guy called me and Kelly at the same time and he goes, congratulations. And I was like, Kelly. You have to talk for me. I can't. And I literally couldn't say anything until at the end, he's like, do you have any questions? I'm like, thank you. That was it. <laughs> now, had you ever been on TV before? Is this your first time on TV? First time on like a reality TV. I think maybe I've done like little things here and there, <sighs> like news things, but nothing. Right. Um, Were you nervous stuff. to be on TV? I was not nervous to be on TV. I was nervous to build Lego on TV. Yeah. Okay. I, I think my personality is made for tv i guess I you would say so like i am very outgoing i'm okay like being you know whatever if they tell me to jump i'll say how high like i am like probably the perfect contestant because i'm okay being weird and embarrassing yeah. and so if they're like do a high kick with will arnett i'm like okay <laughs> and so i loved it i i had the best time there and i would go back in a heartbeat what was will arnett like in person Will is literally amazing um, for me. I think some people have a harder time with him because he is so vivacious and outgoing. And I think he's wonderfully weird. And I love yeah. that because I'm wonderfully weird. And so me and Will had a really good relationship. We bantered. We had a lot of good back and forth between each other. A lot of fun, joking, making fun of each other. Um, the whole season. I think my partner Kelly would be like, can you go? Cause we need to focus on our build. Cause I could have talked to Will for hours and then I wouldn't <laughs> have done anything. Right. Now, did they tell you guys all to wear matching outfits? So yeah, they put you into a category and I always didn't like it when I would watch it previously, but now that I'm on it, I understand why, because from an outside perspective, you can't recognize people right. instantly. It takes a few episodes to recognize. So now that we're on, we are the pink team. Like they know yes. that Emily and Kelly are in pink. And it's a little bit harder to start recognizing until you see faces over and over because there are so many teams in the beginning. Right. You're not going to remember the name of teams unless they have you in a, in like a little category, I guess, right. um, which I think a lot of people don't love, but it, I love it. I love that we got to wear pink. I love that. Like, if I want to be recognized, I put on a pink shirt. If I don't want to be recognized, I put on a black shirt and a cap and I look like every other white woman in the world. So <laughs> it like, it doesn't, 
for me, I loved being in the pink every time. It's something I would wear on a daily basis. Like this is my actual own shirt. I was going to say I'm you're wearing black. pink right now. You got a pink yeah. microphone. <laughs> I have a pink microphone. I have a pink phone. <laughs> Um, so it's not like surprising that pink was a color we were chosen, but I think it also helped us feel underestimated. We came in hot pink clothes, blonde hair, talking about being moms, you know, and I don't think a lot of people knew what we could bring to the table right off the bat. And I think that gave us a little bit of an edge. Totally. Um, now, did you know any of the subject matter before you go on the show? Did they give you any of a hint of what it's going to be about? Or did you just have to go in blind and they tell you what it is and then you make the thing? You go in blind and then you make the thing. <laughs> and literally, I went in blind a couple of episodes because my glasses were glaring so bad that they had asked me to take them off oh, for my walk-ins. Really? Um, so in my walk-ins and my interviews, I'm actually not in my glasses. I wear these 24-7. So in the second episode, it's cats. I have my glasses off. And I'm like, Kelly, rats, guinea pigs, what what animal is that? And luckily she's like, it's kittens. And so that is too funny. <laughs> but over time, I was like, guys, I gotta be able to see when they're giving us our challenge. And so they I was able to wear my glasses after right. I think episode five, they finally let loose on that a little bit. That is so. too funny. I'll have to pay attention now. Yeah. Um, were the Legos provided to you guys or did you have to bring your own Legos? Nope. There's a thing called the brick pit, which has over 5 million Lego bricks oh, and parts and pieces, technic system, all the things. And there are people that sort them, build them. What they do is they give you a, like a big basket, a tray, and each table gets three trays. You can't have more than three trays at your table at a time. Okay. Um, I think that's one for clutter and just for advantage and disadvantage. Someone could just like stack all the Take bricks, right? All. So you get to fill your tray and then when you're done with your tray, you return it to the tray return and then they take it away. They sort it and bring it back out into the brick pit so that you're not shortage on your bricks. Okay. Gotcha. Now, how long did it take to film each episode? I mean, we're watching it at home and it lasts about an hour. How long did it take to actually film them? So if the clock says 12 hours, we literally are for 12 hours. Okay. Gotcha. That's a long time. I, yeah. It, they, if it's 12 hours, the build is 12 hours. So, um, I can't go into great detail on it because of my contract, but if, right. if it says 12 hours, we really only spend 12 hours building. Bathroom breaks are on our own. Okay. On the clock. And for 12 so hours? Oftentimes we don't eat or drink because we want to uh, not have to go to the bathroom. But if the clock says 12 hours, we really only spend 12 hours building. Wow. Okay. So you're skipping meals. Did they feed you while you were there? They feed, they, yeah, they feed us. Um, they feed us well. We always had food. We, I never went hungry. I would have been fine with just Costco pizza and candy every day. I think I was fueled by Red Bull candy and pure adrenaline. Okay. Um, there were times I was feeling so tired. I would actually take a shot of my pre-workout. The one that's like, makes you want to eat glass. It's like so intense. You're like, ah, and I felt like there were times I needed that. So I would take it and then I was ready to go. Which project was the hardest for you on there? Or which did you think was the most complicated? So definitely the roller coaster was our hardest. We had never touched roller coaster tracks in our whole time as Lego builders. But once we got it and once we were proud of it and the flowers and all the moving mechanisms, it was the most rewarding for me at the end because I was so proud of every piece of that. I wouldn't have changed one thing about our roller coaster Every piece and part of that was perfect down to the what the minifigs that were working the ride were wearing. Yeah. They all had little hats on with uh, little ladybug antennas. So every little detail was so flawless that I wouldn't have changed it. I loved our roller coaster. It I was think very the exciting when it worked. Thank I you. Like, oh my gosh, I was so excited too. <laughs> I thought I wish I went into judging and just was like, it's gonna work. Cause I knew it was, but roller coasters are finicky when you have to move it from your table to the judging, like you don't know if something's going to come loose. So I was nervous, but I was very excited when it worked. I would say the volcano episode, which is episode three threw me for a curveball because I thought I was much faster at stacking bricks than it, in reality. I am. I'm <laughs> slow apparently because I looked over at Christopher and Roberts and they're was Mondo Bonandis, this huge, huge volcano. And I'm like, Kelly, I can't do this. And then at that moment, me and Kelly realized we're going to lean into our strengths, which is detail and story and being who we are and not trying to beat other people in size. When you got there and you saw the other contestants, did you recognize any of them from the Lego community? 
the yeah, online so, thing? Yeah. So Lewis, um, the school teachers from Lewis and Alex, they're the yeah. Florida um, American Cuban school teachers. I've known Lewis longer than I actually knew my own partner. So to have him there with me was like really amazing. It was like having just a, another friend there with me supporting me. So yeah. And then I just also fell in love with his partner, Alex, as well. We just, the the three of us, I call us the three musketeers because I just adore them a lot. Now, have you kept in touch with all the people that you were on the show with? Are you guys all now your own community? Yeah, we have a group chat that sometimes I come back and I'm like 150 messages. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? And I'm like the chatterbox, but we have a group chat going and everyone, um, everyone is very kind. Um, we all, it, it, I mean, to go through something like this all together, like you, your bond just grows and grows and grows. And I, I really adore those people on that show. So that's so cute. Now, do you get recognized anywhere? Or was, are you out in public and people are like, it's so like <laughs> So I actually was at Costco just like a couple of days ago and I wasn't even in pink and my hair was in a ponytail and someone's like, hi, I'm sorry to bug you, but are you Emily from Lego Masters? I'm like, I am. And they were like, oh my gosh. And it was like, I wanted to cry right there, but I'm like, hold it together, Emily. Like, we're not going to cry. We're not going to cry to these strangers that you don't even know. But <laughs> it was just like so emotional because like, I'm just a regular mom. Right. But like, it just felt so good to have a mom and women and this little girl just be like, I think you're amazing. I love Lego. And I've just gotten such a big response from girls in general and moms and women just being like, thanks for inspiring us to do things we've always wanted to do. So That's awesome. And you're not a regular mom. You're a cool mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you teach Lego classes at the yep. store and uh, I, if someone wanted to sign up for your classes. How would they do that? So you would need to be probably in the Gilbert area, yeah. but um, hopefully, hopefully I will start teaching online Lego classes. That's okay. my goal that I'm working on right now to teach kids online Lego classes. I would like to be the blippy of Lego. <laughs> if you know who <laughs> blippy is, he's like that big YouTuber for kids. Um, I would love to do that with Lego. So eventually my hope is that I can be, reach an audience online as well as already what I'm doing in person. I think you're going to be able to do that. Now, how many times have you or your husband stepped on a Lego in the dark? Um, I have not because I keep my room pretty uh, organized. Um, and it's a miracle. I, I feel like if I stepped on a Lego, I would just be able to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> You've clearly never like, stepped on one then. <laughs> like all my, uh, all my fingernails are just like, I'm, I'll never have cute hands because my nails are just all broken from... Lego. I like my friends are like, let's go get manicures. I'm like, that's a waste of my money. They're just going to look like crap in a few days anyway, because uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know. I think I could handle it. My hands, my hands and my feet went through a lot in my seven weeks on Lego masters. So. Well, if you're going to have that many Lego, you better be able to there you go, Lex and be organized. I got the same. You got uh, it. Do you now know who Don Johnson is? I now have looked up Don Johnson. He's a real hottie. So I'm sad I didn't know who he was. Um, I actually uh, wrote him and obviously he's not going to respond, but I was like, sorry, I didn't know who you were, but I do now. Congratulations. <laughs> Maybe he will. Do, do you know who Dakota Johnson is? Yeah. Yes. The actress. Yes. It's his daughter. Yes. I know who she is. <laughs> yeah. But like when Will was asking me that, they actually cut out a clip. I'm like, Will, I'm young. Like I was born in 89. Like the, <laughs> My, and he's like, Miami Vice was over in 89. I'm like, I know you're old. You're like, I, th those are kind of the banter I had with Will. Like, and I was like, my Botox is working. Yours is not like th that kind of banter we had back and forth a lot. So, oh, that's fun. I like that guy. Are Legos for all ages? A hundred percent, especially now they are making Lego sets for adults left and right. They have like friends like the actual tv show they have the really the office set they have queer eye a queer eye set they have i think a big bang is coming out oh, that's um, and then they have flowers that are amazing for grown-ups like my none of my flowers out there are real they're in my living room they're all lego flowers all i have to do is dust them they don't die they look pretty so <laughs> yes lexi i challenge you to go get yourself a lego set 
Okay. I think you would really enjoy it. It's so relaxing. It's like coloring. It's so amazing. I'd say it kind of reminds me of the adult coloring books. The a hundred percent are grabbing grabbing onto this. So the, the um, grand prize on the show is to get your own Lego set, to have your own design as a Lego set, right? Yes. Would be your ultimate dream with Lego, or what is your ultimate dream with Lego? Oh my gosh, that would have been like amazing. And we actually didn't know that until the episode came out because oh, only really? the final only the finalists learned that. Okay. Um, so we had no idea until the first episode when they said your set will be made into a Lego set. Like right. I had no idea. Which I was like, ah, dang it, that would have been so cool. There's but other chances. I think so. My partner Kelly has hit the pinnacle of Lego building and her builds are featured in Denmark, which is Lego, like where the Lego headquarters are. Her okay. work is it at Lego headquarters and in the Lego house, which is in Billen, Denmark. So that's like the pinnacle of a Lego builder. She's already hit that. I would love to do that. I think my biggest thing for me, as far as like my dream is to just inspire kids to, and adults, just inspire people to do something they love, even if it feels nerdy or childish or whatever, just do it. Like, it's so cool to do like any kind of thing that makes you happy. I'm a firm believer. And if you're happy, the people around you will also be happy. I love the philosophy. I think yeah. you're the coolest. I know you called yourself a nerd, but I think you're cool. I think it's awesome that you did this and you're doing this as an adult. And I think your, you. Lego dream, your Lego dreams are going to come true. Um, if people want to follow you on social media, do you want to throw out any of that? Or do you have a website? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Emily, E-M-I-L-E-E -E -E underscore builds underscore it. So I will put a link to that when I post this podcast. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk awesome. to me today. This was awesome. Links to all of Emily's socials and the show were posted with this podcast. Unfortunately, Emily and Kelly did not win. Spoiler alert, Christopher and Robert get their eight foot by eight foot build of the World Wonderliner displayed at the flagship Lego store in New York. And then they're going to be flown to Denmark to meet with Lego designers to turn it into a new set. It won't be available for at least a year. Thanks for joining me this week on Delightfully Different. Coming up next week, I'll talk to a voice actor whose name you probably won't recognize, but you will recognize some of his characters. If you or someone you know lives life differently, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, Lexi on the radio at gmail.com. That's L E X I on the radio at gmail.com. Or go to delightfully different podcast.com and have a delightful week.